I'm Daniel Fuller from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily community meditation, where today we're talking about what I call the two connector questions. So I once have a friend of mine who built a fairly large organization, a fairly large church. And he was telling us once, he was leading a Bible study and he was teaching us, he said, if you really want to connect with people, you need to know two things. On one side, you need to know what gets them excited, what motivates them, what's, what excites them, what gets their juices flowing, what are those things that they really enjoy. And then on the other side, you need to know what pushes their buttons. What are the things that agitate them, that get them frustrated, that they really don't like? And if you know those two things about people, it so does so much for helping us to connect with others, to truly know other people. I think it's important also to know these things about ourselves as well, to know these things about God, to know them about ourselves, and to connect in this way with other people as well. Because it can change the way we interact with people. And so we're going to take communion over this today, asking God to help us to grow in this from this point on in our lives. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful. Grateful to have you in our lives. Grateful that you've released us from darkness. You've transferred us into the light. Into the kingdom of Jesus. And he's a great king. You've given us purpose and grace in Christ Jesus before time ever began. Jesus was smitten so that you could fight for us. We get to walk out our days connected to you. Help us to just know you more and more. Who you are, that you are our healer, you're our provider, you're more than enough. You're the God of all grace, the God of all hope, the God of all comfort, the God of all peace. You're the Lord of the heavenly host, the Lord Almighty. Nothing's impossible for you. Jesus, you're the resurrection and the life. You're the way, the truth, the life, the light of the world. And Father, you've done so much for us in Christ. Help us to know all that you've done for us. Help us to receive all these great and precious promises that you've given us in Christ. Promises for every area of life, for whatever problems we're facing. And Father, we're asking for your help. To help us to know you, to know ourselves, and to know the people around us. Help us to better connect with them on these two connector questions. On both sides of the equation. Help us to know on all three levels. The things that are exciting and motivating energizing for people and the things that are just on the opposite side of that spectrum that push people's buttons and get them agitated frustrated i think some symptoms would be paying attention to your energy levels when your energy levels increase or when they decrease help us to understand this and to walk in this lord and we thank you that on the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and said, this is my body. Broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The Apostle Paul says, every time we take communion, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus. And in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until you prove the death. It's proving the death that sets all the benefits in motion. And so as we take communion today, we're believing we're setting this in motion in our lives. We'd all missed it. We'd all gone astray. And God laid upon Jesus the punishment that we deserved. And by his stripes we've been healed. He was crushed and destroyed by God, smitten by God. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in his sight. All through his one sacrifice. And God raised him up from the dead and seated him at his right hand. And he raised us up together with him made us sit together with him. And communion is a celebration of our union with him, being joined back together as one. As Father, I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread.
Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness and transfers us into the light, into the kingdom of Jesus. And he's a great king. His blood washes us and cleanses us. He gives us a fresh start in life. We get to walk out this day today. Think about this. In a covenant relationship with God. Together with him. So Father, I thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your juice, you can take your juice. All right, so usually after our time of communion, we talk about some health and fitness tips because I believe physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. And we've been talking a little bit lately about getting the habit established and then making sure we keep that rhythm. Rhythm is such an important part of our life. And physical exercise is no different. We've got to make sure we keep that rhythm of our exercise. I've told people for years when I had my, my personal training gym, one of the most important things is keeping the rhythm and the habit, even when you don't feel like it, even if it means you just do a little bit to keep that rhythm. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.